Palindrome is probably the most unique roller coaster making its way to the United States in 2022. It's going to a park that probably not too many of you have been to. This is Coda Land at Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas. This is where they do the F1 racing. The park itself has actually only been around for less than a year. It opened at the very end of November 2020 as a children's amusement park, just a handful of rides. In fact, if you go on Apple Maps, the park doesn't even show up. Their website is just one front page. So yes, this small little amusement park is getting a Gerslauer Infinity Coaster, the only one in the United States to be an incomplete circuit. It is the second Gerslauer Infinity to do this after Mystic at Wallaby in France. And even that one is pretty different than palindrome's gonna be. For those of you unfamiliar, a palindrome is a word that can be read forwards and backwards, therefore making this one of the greatest roller coaster names of all time, because wow, that is so genius. I think this is very clever, even though this ride probably won't have very much theming or anything, which is totally fine. This is a park that is very much in the expansion phase. They're just trying to beef this place up so that more people will wanna go. This will be their fourth roller coaster. They currently only have two. One is a Wacky Worm. The other is an SBF Micro Coaster, which is barely even a roller coaster at all, frankly. They're also getting the old Schwarzkopf from Lightwater Valley. So this will be number four and by far their best attraction. And this is not the only addition that the park is receiving. They're also adding a very cool Sky Coaster-like attraction. But instead of getting all harnessed up, you're actually sitting in a physical seat. They're also adding a log flume. So it's really cool to see a park grow like this. And this ride's gonna be a lot of fun. Let's dive into what you can expect. Palindrome features a 95 foot tall height that is up a vertical lift, not quite a beyond vertical drop, though it does bank as it's making its way down. Your top speed is 51 miles per hour. There are two inversions and you're gonna traverse those twice. So technically you're gonna go upside down four times and probably the oddest looking maneuver here, what they're calling a hop stall. It is essentially a spike that has an airtime hill on it. So as you're climbing up, you go over this small little hill, peak, and then go back down. That is going to be a very funky feeling. I'm actually really excited about it. It makes it stand out from the other traditional roller coasters that go forwards and backwards. So many of them feel overdone, but this is a very creative layout. It stretches over the freaking road for Pete's sake. That in itself is going to be very picturesque and an iconic moment for this park. And just to clarify, because I know a lot of people haven't been to this park yet, this road that the ride is going over is not the F1 racetrack. This is a road that goes around Circuit of the Americas. So it does get trafficked quite a bit. So it's going to be an attention grabber. It's going to be one of those attractions that people are going to want to go out and do while they're there for the races. And I really got to commend Gerslauer because they really get so creative when it comes to rides like this. Their Infinity Coaster line is very diverse. Palindrome is only the third Gerslauer Infinity Coaster to make its way to America, the others being in Southern California and Iowa. And this one is very different from those two. It is on the smaller side when it comes to the Infinity Coaster line, but that's okay. It's gonna have 12 passenger trains, which is four more than Monster, four less than Hang Time. It'll have the ability to run more than one train because it has a turntable function. So if you're worried about lines, don't worry, this isn't gonna be like a typical Vacoma boomerang or anything. So let's look at some of those key moments of this layout. So after that vertical lift, we have our twisted drop. The ride twists to the right, very much in the style of something like Expedition G-Force or Conda at Willoughby, Belgium. So that's already very different than the typical Eurofighter drops that we see where it always hits that same like 95 or 97 degree angle. When you're sitting in that last row, you're going to get whipped over this thing. It's going to be awesome. And with that lap bar instead of an over the shoulder, it's going to make this a much smoother ride experience. If you've done one of these newer Gerslauers, you know that these rides are a lot smoother than some of the other Gerslauers done in the past. I have no concerns about that. I think this is going to be a very smooth roller coaster. Following that experience, we pass over a brief section of straight track. This is where the turntable is. So it has to remain straight so it can break you on your way back and then turn you back into the station. So once you slide through that, we hit our stall. By the looks of this animation, it's going to be directly next to a bridge that passes over the road, but the roller coaster itself is not over the bridge. It is directly to the side, so there should be some very cool photo opportunities. In an interview that we did with the senior manager, Matt Huey, he did talk about how they are going to put in some measures in place so that there aren't loose articles flying off, hitting cars, because obviously, you know, that is a concern. This should be a very fun moment, though. I can only imagine what it'd be like to be driving into this park and then you just look up and see the roller coaster flying above you. And then likewise to be on the train looking down at all those cars. You aren't gonna be hanging upside down with this stall for too long. It's not gonna be like Air Force One, which was the other roller coaster that was announced at IAPA 2021. That stall is gonna be much more pronounced. This is gonna snap you in place and then twist out. And following that, we have a moment that I am very excited about. You're banking to the left and then you sharply flip over to the right. It's almost like a stangle dive. There are some similar maneuvers on rides like Skyrim. 
rush. You pop up and then twist over. You'll take that moment with a fair bit of speed, which is gonna be a sharp contrast from on the way back. That moment will be a lot slower on the return trip. Almost lead to some moments where you're kind of hanging there sideways. Should be cool. Following that, we have our inline twist and then our hop stall that we were talking about earlier. I'm very curious to see what the air timing is gonna be like there. It'll be definitely an odd sensation. That's when you take the whole ride backwards again. Definitely won't be as fast paced because that stall is not as high as that first drop. And when you eventually do make it back, you'll partially go up that drop again before sliding forwards and then that's when you'll hit the brakes. The turntable will rotate and now you're back in the station. I have high hopes for this ride. I think it is very, very cool. I know some people were disappointed because this isn't this huge, monstrous ride. But that's okay. I think this is a tremendous fit for this park considering how small it is and how few attractions they have. Austin is actually going to have a really good roller coaster now and for you nerds out there this isn't that far away from San Antonio and with Dr. Diabolical coming to Six Flags Fiesta Texas next year that's going to make for a great little trip especially if you want to keep going north and hit Dallas for Aquaman also coming next year. So I really like what they're doing over there. I expect this roller coaster to open maybe around September, October, November of next year. They want to have it done in time for the big race that takes place every year. So if you're wanting to visit this park, that would definitely be the time to do it. So let me know down in the comments below what you think of this attraction. If you'll be hitting up Coda Land soon, give it a try. And stay tuned for more coaster analyses here at Coaster Studios. And I will see you next time.